You're watching Good Day Siouxland with Nick Wilson and meteorologist Ethan Foreman. From KCAU 9 News, this is Good Day Siouxland. Good morning. It's 6.45 on this Friday morning. I'm Nick Wilson. And I'm Ethan Foreman. And we've got some sunshine for this morning. Yeah, definitely a nice sunrise looking at our KCA United studio camera. Definitely enjoy this while it lasts as next week around this time it's going to be so much colder out there. And we're also going to see a lot more cloud cover too. Here's a look at that Nelson commercial construction camera. That traffic starting to pick up out there as those guys had to work and school this morning. Temperatures right now sitting in the 20s across the area for most. Lots of 19s starting to pop up as well, including Lamar's, Canton, and Sheldon, all at 19 degrees to start the day. 22 in Wayne and 20 the update from Cherokee. We see those temperatures climbing into the upper 40s and low 50s for highs today with a good deal of sunshine. I'll tell you how long this lasts coming up in your full forecast. Thanks, Ethan. Well, before we get into the news, we want to know, do you know a Siouxland woman who is making a difference in her community, setting a great example for others, or serving as an amazing role model? Because if you do, you should nominate her to be one of our KCAU 9 Remarkable Women for 2024. To do that, just head over to our website, suitlandproud.com, and click on Nominate a Remarkable Woman under the Contest tab. Well, a long-running holiday event in Sioux City is coming back to the Ho-Chunk Center and marking its 30th anniversary. Over the last 29 years, the Festival of Trees has raised more than $450,000 for local charities. This year's recipient is Support Siouxland Soldiers, an organization that connects veterans and military families. Organizers say it's quite the process filling the main floor of the center with all the trees. This is so much fun, you know? I mean, I get the chance to see this from, you know, going from an empty room to having all these beautiful lit up trees and we've got wreaths coming in and all that. It's so much fun, you know, and gets you right in the holiday spirit. Opening night is November 20th, and people can learn about the nonprofit and check out dozens of beautifully decorated trees. The trees will be auctioned off 10 days later on November 30th. Well, in the meantime, this year's tour of homes to benefit Big Brothers Big Sisters of Siouxland is underway. The annual fundraiser takes guests on a tour of several local homes that are all decked out for the holidays. And this year, the tour will take place in the city's north side. Tickets are mostly sold out for the event, which runs through November 18th. The proceeds will support Big Brothers Big Sisters Youth Mentoring Program. And KCAU 9 is once again a proud sponsor of the event. And speaking of the holidays, it's just six days until Thanksgiving. And now we know which lucky Siouxlander will receive a $100 gift card to Hy-V through our KCAU 9 Thanksgiving Feast giveaway. Congrats to our winner, Natasha Gilmore Underwood of Sergeant Bluff. And a big thank you to Elite Executive Partners for sponsoring this giveaway. Be sure to keep an eye out both on air and online for our next giveaway or contest. And speaking of Thanksgiving, an organization is getting ready to help South Dakotans in need celebrate the holiday. Feeding South Dakota is preparing to hand out thousands of meals during tomorrow's giveaway. The organization's volunteers play a vital role during the distribution and every day of the year. They say they've got plenty to be grateful for, especially since more than 3,300 people donated their time last year. Um, you know, many hands make light work, and so having more volunteers makes the work so much more impactful and go much faster. And then food drives are always a great way to fill the needs of Feeding South Dakota, whether it's a family food drive or a food drive at your business or church or, you know, a, a group that you're in. Feeding South Dakota says the number of people seeking assistance is on the rise, with around 72,000 South Dakotans now considered food insecure. However, they add their number of volunteers has continued to rise as well. And sticking with the holiday spirit, the 185th Air Refueling Wing received a gift from the Boy Scouts. The Mid-America Council delivered $20,000 worth of popcorn to the 185th yesterday, donated through the Scouts' annual popcorn fundraiser. The 185th does so much in the Siouxland Tri-State area, 
and they helped serve that area for such a long time. We've, we just want to give a thank you to them, what they do, as well as uh, being so close to Veterans Day and the holidays. We felt it was just the perfect timing for it. The wing now has a total of 100 boxes of white cheddar, kettle corn, and s'mores flavored popcorn to enjoy. Well, now it's time to meet today's stray of the day, and every day we share a pet picked up by Sioux City Animal Adoption and Rescue, who's waiting to go home. That's right, and this is Jack, a four to six month old male orange tabby cat. He was found on the 1000 block of 34th Street. The rescue says he's a playful and goofy kitten with a lot of energy. Jack will be available for adoption tomorrow though, not today. If you've lost your pet, looking to adopt, or you'd like to sponsor a pet for adoption like Jack, then you can visit the rescue's website. That's at SiouxCityAnimalRescue.com. Jack, he looks like a friendly cat, and he's got a nice coat too, some nice color. Maybe he'll enjoy some of that sunshine that we're getting. Yeah, that definitely going to be some orange skies later today as we have lots of sunshine on the way. Here's a look at that satellite and radar. We actually did see a little bit of rain move through through the overnight hours. We mentioned yesterday I would uh, we would have to see if that held together or not, and it actually did this time. We'll see. We did see four hundredths of an inch of rainfall here at the KCA United Studio, two hundredths at the Sioux Gateway Airport. If you do have any totals, make sure you send them our way on our stormcast now. We see that high pressure system move off to our south and west throughout the day today. That will give us plenty of sunshine going forward, maybe just a few high level clouds as we head into Saturday. Saturday is looking even warmer than today, but very pleasant day on the way for Saturday. Sunday is what we have to watch though. We do see a storm system start to develop already impacting areas like Norfolk, Tacoma, and maybe toward Yankton right around nine o'clock in the morning on Sunday and we'll continue to move north and eastward throughout the morning. Our southern areas are the areas that are expected to get the most from this where some areas could get as much as an inch or maybe slightly higher as you head to the northeast though totals drop off significantly but again this is still several days out so this could very well change and we will have updates for you over the weekend sunny calmer and cooler for today as we hit 52 for that high cooler than we've been all week but still above average and then clear and brisk on the way for tonight as we drop to the opposite 25 degrees for the overnight low. We flip flop those numbers and then we see temperature of 64 for Saturday with good deal of sunshine. That's, that rain moves in in the afternoon on Sunday, lasts into most of Monday. Then we really start to cool down. Temperatures down in the 40s and eventually 30s. It looks like quite a breezy week next week. We are watching another system that could be impacting Thanksgiving holiday plans across the country. Thanks, Ethan. Now we turn to sports, where there was just one game standing between Woodbury Central and the Class A state title. Noah Sacco and Anthony Mitchell have the highlights from that momentous game right here in your morning sports wrap. Good morning, Siouxland. The moment has arrived. State Championship Day started yesterday at the Unidome as one of our three Siouxlanders still standing contended for the Class A state crown. Casey Nine's Anthony Mitchell had more on the title game between an unbeaten Woodbury Central and West Hancock. Just one game separates Woodbury Central from winning its first state championship since 1980. The Wildcats taking on West Hancock in the Class A state championship. These two teams last met in 2019. Eagles eliminated the Wildcats from the postseason. Woodbury Central aiming to avenge that loss here in the 2023 title game. Woodbury Central strikes first. Zach Butler hits pay dirt with a three-yard score. Wildcats take the 7-0 lead. Eagles on the other end. Mitchell Smith keeps it, bounces to the outside, beats the defense to the end zone. 25-yard touchdown, two-point try, no good. Woodbury Central up 7-6 at the end of the first quarter. Cats continue to driving down the field. Drew Clunder finds Eric McGill for the score. McGill's 12th receiving touchdown of the season. That's a big one. Woodbury Central leads 14-6. After a West Hancock score trims the lead to 14-12, Wildcats going back to Butler. He drives it in for the one-yard touchdown. Wildcats take the 21-12 lead into halftime. Out of the break, Eagles cap off a 72-yard drive with a balancing act. 22-yard touchdown from Kellen Smith. They'd failed the two-point try. Wildcats still up 
21-18. Later in the quarter, a big response from Woodbury Central. That's TD number three for number three. Big game for Butler. WC takes a 28-18 lead into the fourth quarter. West Hancock not going away just yet. Kale Zeal barrels in for the goal line touchdown. It's a 28-24 Wildcat lead with under 12 minutes remaining. Wildcats looking for another touchdown. Clunders pass tipped and intercepted by the Eagles. Big momentum change late in the game. That sets up the eight-yard touchdown pass from Smith to Brady Bixell. Eagles take its first lead of the game, going up 30-28 with 37 seconds remaining. Woodbury Central picks up some yards as time ticks down, setting up a 48-yard field goal attempt from Jaden Lloyd. It's up, but it's short. Wildcats fall the Class A title game in a heartbreaker, 30-28, a team that made it back to the state championship game for the first time in over four decades. It's huge. The community obviously shows it too. I've never, I've never seen that many people in one spot as myself, and to be able to play in front of it and to be able to bring that to community is just a huge thing for this team, and hopefully it continues. It's awesome. I mean, when you're out there playing a game you love with the guys you love, you can't beat it, and that's just what that was today. Woodbury Central finishes the year with a 12-1 record and the Class A state runner-up. Reporting from the Unidome, Anthony Mitchell, KCU 9 Sports. Congrats again to Woodbury Central on a fantastic season. Not to check it, sports, you stay classy, Siouxland. Thanks, Noah and Anthony. Well, now let's take a look at this morning's top stories, what you need to know before you go. The Iowa Board of Regents is looking to improve diversity, equity, and inclusion at the Hawkeye State's Regent Schools. The task force and review was mandated by a new state law signed by Governor Kim Reynolds back in June. There were 10 recommendations. Some of those include restructuring university-wide DEI offices and reviewing all college-level DEI positions. Another recommendation concerns free speech on campus. Our campuses should be a place where debate and conversations take place, as well, as well as learning the ability to see both sides of an issue and argue both sides of it. External intrusions do not improve learning, but are trying to undermine and control the universities. The universities will have time to study these guidelines and will report back to the board in April. Meanwhile, here in Siouxland, a delegation from Japan is visiting Sioux City in celebration of a special milestone. The group from Yamanashi City is here to mark the 20-year anniversary of a sister city's program between the two communities. The five visiting representatives include the mayor, the superintendent of the local schools, and other city leaders. Yesterday, they toured the Sioux City Police Department and enjoyed a beverage at Hardline Coffee. I am especially moved for the hospitality and your warm welcome in Sioux City and uh, uh, um, on behalf of the delegation, I thank the people in Sioux City. The mayor says he appreciates the relationship with Sioux City and hopes it continues. The delegation also made stops at other Sioux City landmarks like Jolly Time Popcorn and Morningside University. And finally, federal prosecutors have finished making their election fraud case against Kim Taylor less than a week after the first witness was called to the stand. Taylor is facing more than 50 voter fraud charges in connection with two local elections in 2020. Federal prosecutors called several members of the local Vietnamese community to the stand who said Taylor assisted them with casting ballots in the primary and general election in 2020. Woodbury County Auditor Pat Gill also testified. He told jurors he alerted the FBI following the elections regarding what he saw as voting irregularities. Federal Judge Leonard Strand has dismissed jurors until Monday morning. That's when Taylor's defense is expected to begin presenting their case. Well, one last look at the forecast. We're in for a fairly sunny day. Yeah, definitely sunny, but definitely much cooler than we've seen over the past few days. It will also be much calmer as well as we see that high at 52 degrees. Those winds will be switching from the northwest to the southwest today. 5 to 10 miles per hour, much less breezy than we saw yesterday. Those winds lighten even further tonight as we drop down to 25 degrees with clear skies and brisk conditions. Winds out of the west at just 5 miles per hour. Then we see those highs tomorrow climb back into the mid-60s, but that's the last day for a long time that we see 
temperatures that warm. Then we see those temperatures start to drop into Sunday, still above average. Monday, more seasonal, but definitely a lot wetter. Some areas could experience as much as half an inch to an inch of rainfall. We'll continue to monitor this throughout the weekend. The best chance of that is south and west of Sioux City. We see those highs climb back into the 30s for highs for much of next week, including Thanksgiving and Black Friday. Those overnight lows are going to be in the teens, and we'll also see breezy conditions that will make it feel like the 20s during the day. After quite a few dry days, looking like we'll see some more rain. Yeah. Thanks for watching. PCU 9 News returns at 1130.